All right, everybody. Praise the Lord. Pastor Steve Sterling here from the Dallas Revival Center, uh, welcoming all of you on another wonderful Sunday. It's a beautiful day outside here in Dallas. It's 99 degrees. It was 101 yesterday. We may, we'll probably break the century mark again today. And uh, from what I'm hearing, that we're, we're going to have a warm up uh, for a while here because of this is what the news is saying. Of course, if we get to prayer, we'll turn that the other direction. But uh, um, it's just all the expression experience all, of all the heat coming from the uh, west coast and all the states that are being in, in just in being uh uh just being turned into uh torches and flames so we're just praying for all of that to subside and, and uh, all of that to uh, rescind and uh, go back into the water where where god can you know just quell it and dispel it and get it off the land in Jesus' name. Uh, yeah, we just had a report here before service about someone's sister who tried to drive from California, and there was so much traffic they had to turn around and go back home. So we're very concerned about the safety and the welfare of everyone involved there. <clears throat> so we're going to be praying for them. And also... Um, you know, there's a lot going on in the world. We got the we got the Olympics going on right now. Um, I was watching some of it before I came to church today, but there's a lot happening in the world at large. There's a lot of Corona, uh, a virus trouble over there. A lot of the uh, uh, competitors are not able to compete because they're uh, being tagged with Corona and some other things. So, and, and there's a lot of uh, world awareness about. The culture of, um, I guess you might say, tragedy. A lot of bad news out there, but we don't focus on bad news. We focus on the good news that God can turn anything and everything around. Praise God. Hallelujah. I like that in Revelation eleven seventeen. It says, saying, we give you thanks, O Lord God, the Almighty, who are and who who was, because you have taken your great power and have begun to reign. You've taken your great power and you've begun to reign. So God has all power, and he's definitely in charge. And uh, when he takes his power and starts to surge and work, then the reigning begins. The good things begin, and, and, and things begin to envelop and develop, in heavenly manner and heavenly uh, vicissitudes. Praise God. And I like it in uh, Hebrews 1, 3. It says the sun radiates God's own glory. We're talking about the son of God here. Now we're talk we talked earlier about in the other scripture about the almighty God, the father. And now we're talking about the son's power. In Hebrews 1, 3, the sun radiates God's own glory. You realize the sun radiates God's own glory? In radiating the glory, and he lives, if you're born again, he actually lives in you. He lives in you. And he's irradiating and radiating his glory. The sun radiates God's own glory and, and expresses the very character of God. So it's like Tim said earlier before church, he said, you know, uh, the kingdom of God's not shaken. Why should it be shaken if the character of God and the radiating, irritating glory of the sun is in you? How can you be shaken? And he says, it says he sustains everything by the mighty power of his command. Yes. He sustains everything by the mighty power of his command. Yes. Ooh, that is so glorious. Look at that. In Hebrews 2.8 says there's nothing outside of God's control. There's nothing outside of the Son's control. The Son controls everything. The Son of God controls everything. That's so awesome. Um, and so if you're born again, and that's a topic, you know, that we really need to talk more about. Not a lot of people do talk about. I don't hear a lot of people talking about being born again anymore. It's a rare topic, but you know, in um, 
Colossians, the second chapter in the 12th verse, it says, for you were buried with Christ when you were baptized. And with him, you were raised to new life because you trusted the mighty power of God who raised Christ from the dead. Look at that. So the same power that raised Christ from the dead is the same power that raised our life to a new life. And that same power will what? We just read about it. That same power will sustain everything in our lives uh, by the mighty power of his command. The one that holds the stars in space. The one that holds all the universes in place. The one that holds the sun and the moon and all the other planets in, in a revolution and in access uh, in our solar system. The one that controls it all causes it all to be sustained and maintained uh, is living inside of us. Isn't that, isn't that the tipping of power? Talk about the tipping of power. We've got it. Thank you, Jesus. And so uh, I'm getting to something. I'm, I'm, I'm sharing this prelude to get to something very important. Um, in Isaiah 60, verse 16, it says, you will also suck the milk of nations and the breast of kings. Then you will know that I am the Lord, I am your Savior, and your Redeemer, the Mighty One of Jacob. Jesus. Here we're talking about a covenant God. When you get in, not only when you get born again, when you get, but when you get in league with God as being a son and daughter of God, and you're obedient, you begin to get into the full fulcrum and force of God's uh, pertinent presence and power and purpose. You then get into covenant, and, you be, and he, he reveals covenant with you. Yes. Uh, you begin to see that there's great overtures of, of amazing, phenomenal resources available to you. My, 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 my. He's your redeemer. He's your, the mighty one of, of Jacob. In other words, the mighty one of covenant. Yes. And uh, it's so great. And we just last week sowed another large seed, so... We're seed sowing. We're, we're right on cue, right in the mix. Um, we sowed two seeds the last two weeks, uh, a large seeds. The first seed was sown for a wisdom lifestyle uh, transfer, a wisdom lifestyle upgrade, you might say. That was the first seed. The second seed was sown so that we can walk in wisdom steps that are steps that Psalm 37 talks about steps of a good man ordered by the Lord, right? And so those steps will be filled with wisdom. That's what we sowed last week. I think I, th I think it was what a Wednesday or Thursday we sowed the large seed. And you can't, you, you know, seeds activate faith. I don't want to get into all that right now, but just to let you know, that as you really get into the particulars of covenant, you become very uh, mindful of what seeds can do and how they can how they can function and how they operate and accelerate a person's life and promote a person's life and increase a person's life. We have a lot of people that sow tithes, but they don't go above the tithe. They always stay at a certain amount and a certain level. And I see their lives stay at a certain level as well. They don't really excel and exceed the normal because they don't do abnormal things. You know, God says in his word, my, he, he talks about his remnant being for signs and wonders. He wants us to plunder and, and walk in his wonder and walk in his holy thunder. Glory to God. Hallelujah. So uh, we're seed sowing here and God is moving mightily. And that give me such revelation knowledge. It's just been incredible what's been going on around here. Uh, in, in Luke 149, it says, for the mighty one has done great things. The mighty one has done great things for me. Mighty one has done great things for me. <clears throat> and so um, anyway, I want to get into to Joel chapter two. And I want to say something about it uh, right at the get-go. So I'm going to go over to Joel chapter 2 
and let's just, I don't know, let's pick a translation, I guess. I, I guess we can just go with the KJV, and I've got the NAV standing by behind me. Um, and we may pop there, but this, this is what I want to open up with here. Um, in Joel chapter 2, verse 1. And this is this is the this is really key because a lot of people have have ex, have experimented with kingdomology. They've experimented with it, but they have not been very successful with it. And we want to get down and focus on uh, what possibility. Uh, is there uh, yet for us that we have not seen. We want to be able to find out what it is that we're not getting a hold of so that we can gravitate into kingdom wheels and have kingdom functionality and have kingdom validation and have God underwriting our everyday actions. God, you know, and the word of God tells us that he daily loads us with benefits. That's one scripture right there. His benefit package is greater than any benefit package that this world could offer. But in, in, in the second chapter, in the first verse of Joel, it says, Blow ye the trumpets in Zion. Blow ye the trumpets in Zion. Sound an alarm in my holy mountain. Let all of the inhabitants of the land tremble. For the day of the Lord cometh and is nigh at hand. Let's just read down a little bit. It says, a day of darkness and of gloominess, a day of clouds and of thick darkness as uh, morning spreads upon the mountains, a great people, a strong. There hath not ever been like that. Neither shall there ever be any more, even to the years of many generations. In verse, in verse 3, a fire devoureth before them. Talking, He's talking about a, a great army here. A fire devoureth before them. A flame burneth. The land is, is as the garden of Eden before them. Behind them a desolate wilderness. Yea, nothing shall escape this fire. Wow. Nothing shall escape this army. Wow. Nothing shall escape this darkness. Escape. Right? So it moves on and it's, it's pretty cataclysmic. Verse 4, and the appearance of them is, is as uh, appearance of horses and as horsemen. And so they run. Like the noise of chariots on the tops of mountains shall they leap. The noise of the flame of fire that devoureth the stubble as strong people set in battle array. There it is. It started, it started to describe this, this army. The noise of a flame of fire that devoureth the stubble, a strong people set in battle array. Look at that. And before their face, the people shall be much pained, and all their faces uh, shall gather blackness. Wow. And then it says about the army in verse 7, They shall run like mighty men, they shall climb the wall like men of war, and they shall march every one on his own way, and they shall not break their ranks. Verse 7, neither shall one thrust another. Uh, they shall walk every one in his path. And when they fall upon the sword, they shall not be wounded. Look at that. Wow. Talk about a supernatural army here. They shall run in, uh, to and fro in the city, and they shall run upon the wall, and they shall climb up upon the horses, and they shall enter into the uh, windows like a thief. Verse 10, the earth shall quake before them and the heavens shall tremble and the sun and the moon shall be dark and the stars shall withdraw their shining. Look at that now. Talk about all hope eclipsing here. Now the stars are withdrawing their shining. Verse 11, the Lord shall utter his voice before his army for his camp is very great. The Lord shall utter his voice before his army. Did you hear what he said? The Lord shall utter his voice before his army. This is God's army here. His camp is very great for the strong that execute for for it is he is strong that executeth his word. The Lord shall utter his voice before his army, for uh, his camp is very great, for he is strong that executeth his word. Now, and I want to key in on that verse eleven. Know that your God 
he's leading an army of supernatural power and prowess and strength and ability. And it is directed toward his enemy. And he's strong in executing his word. God is strong in executing his word. A lot of people don't believe that the word of God has any veracity. They don't believe the word of God has any, any real power. But how many know the Bible says the, the word of a king is full of power? The word of a king is full of power. God's word is prolific. It's so powerful. And we need to key in on that. For he, he is strong that executeth his word for the day of the Lord is great and very terrible. And who can abide it? Verse 12, therefore, also now be patient with me because we'll, we'll just we'll get to the main theme. But I want to read down here and kind of give you some exhilaration about how powerful God is. Therefore, also now saith the Lord, turn ye even with me with all your hearts. See, so here's he's starting to key in now. He just shook. He just shook the people up with these statements. Uh, they're half out of their minds. They're afraid. Terror striking people's hearts and, uh, you know, helplessness is hitting. And, you know, uh, if you read those first 10 or 11 verses, it's it can if you're not born again, that'll scare you half to, half out of your mind, won't it? If, you know, if God be for us, who then can be against us? If it hadn't been the Lord who was on my side, what would I have done? What would we have done? Right? To have God as an ally and not an enemy is very, very fortunate for someone. To have God as an ally and not an enemy is very fortunate. Can you say amen? You know, and, and to break this down, you know, God even says in his word, that if you walk in the flesh, you're at war with him. I know it. The Bible says the, the flesh is, yeah, is it empty with God? And, and, and the Bible does say specifically that you're at war with him if you walk in the flesh. And a lot of people don't get to where they need to go in kingdom things because it is a spiritual kingdom. And the spiritual kingdom cannot even be unlocked until you're born again. If you're, if you're not born again, you can't even see the kingdom of God. And so you need to know that this thing all hinges and fastens on spirituality. Um, Therefore now, saith the Lord, turn ye even to me with all your heart. So God gives a remedy here real quick. Therefore, also now, saith the Lord, turn ye even to me with all of your heart. See, right there, uh, you know, 75% of the people fall down because they're only giving God lip service. You know, they're half-baked. They only, they only give God his due whenever they feel like they want to. They only give God his due whenever they feel like they want to. They're not real disciples. People really aren't bearing up their cross. They're not going all the way with God. They're, 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 they're self-seeking rather than searching uh, for God. And Jesus even said, you, you, he says, you err uh, in reading the scriptures. Because in them, you can't find eternal life. There's no power there. How many know that God wants us to have power? Behold, I give you power, he said in Luke 10, 19. Tread upon serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. You cannot move the enemy off of your finance by just dancing around and quoting a few scriptures. It takes spiritual power and commitment and 100% sellout to knock the devil out of the door of your resource. And it says, therefore also now say the Lord, turn ye even to me, he said, to turn to me with all your heart. And with now it says, and with fasting and with weeping and with mourning. We cannot, if we, you know, to be conscious of your sinful nature, our sinful nature, to be conscious of our sinful nature and our sinfulness will will cause us to become disqualified from 
actually flowing in prosperity. The Bible tells us that he that hideth his sin shall not prosper. Right? He that hideth his sin shall not prosper. So we got to get sin handled and get it under the blood and be transparent before God and give God his due. Uh, and look what it says here. Um, Turn ye to the Lord, see, even to me. And, uh, you know, and, and I'm reading. Uh, yeah, let's see here if I can. I want to go to Job real quick. I wasn't going to do that, but uh, I'll just do it anyway and get down to some of the nitty gritty. See, I want, how many want to prosper? I mean, well, we want to be blessed. There's no reason why. And as I just read earlier that we have the son of God who controls the universes living on the inside of who's, who holds everything together by his commanded word. And there's nothing outside of his control. How, I mean, there's no reason why we should not be prospering to the umpteenth level. Um, it says in, in Job 22, 21, it says, submit to God. There it is again. Submit to God. Be at peace with him. In this way, prosperity will come to you. Look at that. Submit to God. Be at peace with him. See, when we're at war with God and living in the flesh is war with God. When we're getting fleshed out. We're doing things in the natural. We're walking in the carnal. We're walking, we're walking by sight and not by faith. See, we're not we're not flowing in uh, totally giving ourselves to God. We're, we're, we're half in and half out. And so we're dislodging ourselves from God's power and protocol and privileges. Um, submit to God. Be at peace with him. In this way, prosperity will come to you. You don't have to chase prosperity. Prosperity will chase you down. Don't have to chase after money. Money will chase you down. But it says in verse 22 of Job 22, it says, accept instruction from his mouth and lay his words up in your heart. <laughs> accept instruction from his mouth and lay his words up in your heart. If you return to the Almighty, you will be restored. If you return to the Almighty, you will be restored. If you remove wickedness from your tent and assign your nuggets to the dust, your gold of orf to the rocks in the ravines, then the Almighty will be your gold and your choicest silver for you. you look at that, verse 25. The Almighty will be your gold and the choicest silver for you. Amen. Then he gets down here and he says, um, surely you will find in verse 26, he says, surely you'll find delight in the all, surely you will find delight in the all, surely you will define, you will find delight in the almighty, surely you will find delight in the almighty. Everybody say delight in the almighty. If you de delight in the Lord, he'll give you the desires of your heart. If you delight in the Lord. Are we really delighting in the Lord? Are we, and I've got a whole, I've got, a, I've got six pages on praising God and worshiping God and rejoicing in God. You know, if we're connected to him, we're going to have God rejoicing going on. In the, we'll be dancing on the inside. We'll be happy. We'll be free. We'll be, we'll be, we'll be frolicking in God's greatness. We'll be. Uh, inhibitedly just uh, resounding with thanksgiving and, and, and his glorious praises will be rolling out of our mouths uh, from the currents in the streams of our belly. We'll be just beside ourselves. You see, this is where people need to live. But we have a lot of people that they key on hardship, they key on difficulty, they key on the key on uh, uh, calamity and, and, and circumstances and situations. They just let all that pile up instead of going back to the Almighty and acquainting yourself again with him and becoming peaceful. Um, and he says in verse 27, uh, you will pray to him and he will hear you and, and you will fulfill your vows and what you decide on will be done. Look at that. what you decide on will be done. See, then when you sow a vow, offering, tithes, or whatever. See, 
then when you do that, God hears you. Then what you decide will be done and light will shine on your ways. Amen. See, light will shine on your ways and what you decide on will be done. See, there it is. That's where the rubber meets the road. But it's all about getting back to the basics, getting back to God. Thank you, Jesus. Um, uh, let me let me run over here. I, I just want to find go back and, and finish reading there in, in uh, Joel. Let's go back to him. Finish reading. It says it in verse 13 it says, rend your heart and not your garments. See, God wants an inward conversion. He wants us to get serious, not just at our head, but he wants us to get serious in our heart. He wants us to get back to our first love. He wants to get back to enjoying Jesus. He wants us to get back to having church again. Amen. My God, I feel that in the Holy Ghost. And someone out there is getting touched by God right now, even as I'm speaking. Rend your heart and not your garments. Turn unto the Lord your God. There it is. For he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and of great kindness, and it repenteth of him of evil. God doesn't want us to suffer. God doesn't want us to miss it. He doesn't want us to be disallowed from all of the things that he has put together for us. Amen. But he's he's merciful. He's he's kind. He he doesn't want to do us bad. He, he's full of grace towards us. And then it says in verse uh, 15, blow the trumpet in Zion, sanctify a fast and call a solemn assembly. See, if you really, really can't break up the fallow ground, it just seems like, you know, you're, you're, you're too full of yourself and you just can't seem to get uh, below the surface of the hard soil of the hardness of your heart. And then he says here, look, sanctify a fast. Some people need to sanctify a fast for a day. I mean, you can't get a person to give up a meal for one uh, for, for three hours, you know, for one meal a day. Uh, because people are just too stubborn in their belly. They have buddied up with the, the flesh so much that they can't push away uh, a meal or two. But when, if you really are a serious seeker and you're really transparent, and I mean, and you're really desperate and you really have to have change. I feel that. I feel that for somebody right now. And you really, really got to get this thing taken care of. Then sometimes you've got to get to a solemn fast and get down and begin to really get a hold of the horns of the altar. Amen. And in, in verse uh, 18, gather the people, sanctify the congregation, assemble the elders, gather the children of those that suck of the breast and let the bridegroom go forth of her chamber and the bride out of her closet. Uh, and then it talks about the priesthood lamenting and mourning. See, a lot of the churches that we go to, uh, you know, a lot of, you know, the, the people go to their, their, you know, their pastors are so far from uh, the realm of real living possibilities with kingdom things, you know, because they display themselves and they show themselves, but in an outward manner and they're, you know, they've got everything set up just the way it needs to be, but they may be far away from God and you may be going there and you're in the priesthood is out of alignment and they're not in divine order. They're not touching God. It says, let the priests and the ministers of the Lord weep between the porch and the altar and, and let them say, spare the people, O Lord. See, priesthoods aren't praying for the people. And, and that's where a lot, of, a lot of our finances are going down the tube and going down the drain because we don't have pastors that will pray for people's betterment and, and, and people's uh, uh, relationship with God. Spare the people, O Lord. They should pray, spare the people, give not their heritage to reproach. Give not their heritage to reproach. You mean there's a heritage in the balance? Yes, there's a, there's a heritage in the balance here. We can't touch, 
take church lightly. Pastors can't take their congregations lightly. They cannot do that because there's a heritage that's at stake that could be reproached. That the heathen should rule over them. Wherefore should they say among the people, where is their God? In other words, what he's saying is, <laughs> we're just laughing at the people in the church. They, you know, they're broke, busted, disgusted. They don't barely have enough to make it by on a, on a weekly basis. They're just hand to mouth. And, and, and the world just laughs with scorn and just mocks the church because they're, they're, they're pitiful and they're powerless. But see, he, he mentions this here. My, my, my. But then all of a sudden, something changes here in the whole tenation and, and, and the whole revelation of, of, of this chapter in verse 20. It says, but I will remove far off from you the northern army and will drive him into a land barren and desolate. In other words, God knows how to get rid of the desolation and barrenness. And the key here is that I will remove from off of you the northern army and will drive him into a land barren and desolate wow. with his faith toward the sea. See, the thing is, there, there, there are strongholds and bastions that are warring against your finance. It warring against your inheritance, warring against your heritage, warring against your kingdom uh, resources. But God said, I, I'll begin to, I'll give you the leverage you need and I'll begin to war and I'll blow back the enemy. I'll remove far off from you the northern army. Amen. And he begins to talk about the change that's coming. And look what it says here in, in verse 21. It says, fear not, O land, be glad and rejoice. Fear not, O land, re be glad and rejoice, for the Lord will do great things. Fear not, O Lord, and rejoice, for the Lord will do great things. God doesn't want us in a fear mode. He wants us in a faith mode. He wants us to believe against all hope. He wants us to move with resounding trust in him and, and to know that he loves us. He's full of compassion and grace. And his mercies are new every day. And he wants to just infill us and enliven us and enrich, enrich us with himself. Yeah. Be not afraid. Amen. You beasts of the field. God, God begins to even talk to the beasts of the field. Uh, for the pastors of the wilderness, uh, look what he says now. The pastors in the wilderness do spring up. Yeah. The pastors of the wilderness do spring up. Look at that. See, he just said in verse 20, I will remove from off of you the northern army and will drive him into a land barren and desolate. God puts the enemy into barren desolation. And then here, God begins to comfort the beasts of the field and comfort the humans and says, for the pastures of your wilderness will spring up. Your trees will bear fruit, bear her fruit. Fig trees and the vine do yield their strength. Do yield their strength. My God. See, God wants us to have, and I've, and I've talked about this before, God, God is accelerating miracles and he's maximizing miracles. He's putting the miracle power of his ability in the force of his seed. He's going to cause it to yield in the fullness of its strength. Yeah. That's why, and as, as God revealing this to me, I'm going to continue to sow very strategic and powerful seeds. Amen. Because that's the way out of the way we used to live that's the truth. into the way that God lives, and he will allow us to assume companionship with him there. Companionship with him there. Hallelujah. 
It's so liberating. I'm so free. I'm so happy. I used to be controlled by the God of Mammon. I used to be controlled by the tight fist. You know, I, I used to have a tough rein on my money and count my money and look at the bank and see the totals and just look around and just monitor things. And what a terrible way to live. It's, it's exhausting. It really is. But when God comes in and frees you, and he opens up the whole panorama of things and begins to indoctrinate you and teach you and give you information. And then you respond with that information and you begin to you begin to become uh, obedient and begin to do the things that are written in his word. Oh, heaven breaks loose. As we're seeing here. It says in verse 23, it says, be glad then, ye children of Zion, rejoice in the Lord your God. Be glad, you children of Zion. Rejoice in the Lord your God, for, for, for he hath given you the former rain moderately, and he will cause to come down for you the rain and the former rain and the latter rain in the first month. He talks about a boon of finances coming in, such of the like that we've never known. He's just going to upswing it, and he's going to just flip the switch, yeah. and he is going to let the motor run. Yes. He says, and I will restore to you the years the locusts have eaten, the, cat oh. the, the canker worm, the caterpillar, the palm worm, the great army which I sent among you. Look what he says in verse 26. You shall eat in plenty and be satisfied. What? Eat in plenty and be satisfied? Eat in plenty and be satisfied. And you'll praise, see there, pray, there's the praise. Pray, and you'll praise the name of the Lord your God that hath done wondrous things with you. And my people shall never be disappointed. God brings a restoration. God heals the past. God mends and puts everything back together again. And his miracle power begins to operate. And we have such praise yes. and adulation in our mouth because yes, we, we see the wonderment of God's dealings God. in our material life. God. The wonderment of God's dealing in our material life. And you shall know that I am in the midst of Israel and that I, the Lord your God, am there and there's no one else. And my people uh, will never be ashamed. And then he talks about a spiritual revival hitting after that, but I don't want to get into that right now. But the whole point of it is the blocks of the material. They're there. They're real. But we've got to get real. We've got to get transparent. We've got to get down to the nitty gritty. We have got to give our heart back to God. We've got to get back in alignment with God. We, we have to start really living this thing, and we have to start receiving from God divine instruction and divine teaching and let us let us be corrected in order then that we can flow in God's supernatural abiding abundance thank you Jesus and again remind you Joel 224 the threshing floors will be filled with grain and the vats will overflow with wine and oil talk about overflow like we've never seen before. Amen. Amen. And then the double portion hits. Yes. About the about the autumn autumn rains and the you know in the early rains. Yes. He sends you abundant showers in Joel 223, both autumn and spring rains, as as it was. The threshing floors will be filled with grain. In other words, you won't be able to spend it fast enough. Yeah. You won't be able to spend it fast enough when more is coming in right behind it. Jesus. Hallelujah. And you know, the Praise devil knows it. The devil knows yeah. that he's got people hoodwinked. He's got yeah. people, you know, uh, in their minds. They're hostile with God and they're backing up and they should be running forward with all, in all on all fours. They should be running forward to God like never before. But and a lot of people just haven't figured out, but you, know, you know why? Because they haven't really been taught. They haven't been told. They haven't been instructed. 
They haven't received information that will change their life. But we've just given you some insight. So I believe through these insights, somehow, some way, in God's wonderful way, he's going to turn things around. You know, I like what it says in Psalm 119, 102. It says, I rejoice in your promise like one who finds great spoil. I rejoice in your promise like one who finds great spoil. The, the, all that we need to know is right in the word of God. Everything we, everything we want in our life comes right out of the word of God. I rejoice in your promise like one who finds great spoil. In other words, when you get a hunger for the word of God and you really put yourself in the middle of God's uh, word. If you abide in me, John 15, 7, and I abide in you, you ask what you will and it shall be done. (laughs) Amen? Amen. I mean... Sowing is good. Jesus. Strategy of sowing is excellent. But God just doesn't want your money. He wants you. Yeah. You can't make deals with God. Because God's the one dealing the cards. And I've got this on me right now. I'm, I want to close it. You know, I've got so much. I'm, I'm going to close here in, in a minute or two. But in Isaiah 9, 3, it says, You have enlarged the nation and increased their joy. They rejoice before you as a people rejoice at the harvest as warriors rejoice when finding plunder. Now, that key, I keyed it in that verse, and I thought, wait, there it is again. See, the enemy has keyed in on your financial resource and well-being. He knows how to stop you. But here he says, I've given you joy. I, I have, I've, I've caused you to rejoice. I'm enlarging you anyway. I'm giving you the kind of joy that you have when you uh, when you rejoice at harvest time. In other words, I'm going to give you so much joy. You're going to know that you are rich. You're going to know you're wealthy. You're going to know there is a life change. You're going to know there's a lifestyle change. You're going to have something in you that is going to beat to a different drummer. And you are going to be so drunk in knowing that your God is doing exploits in your finance. Amen. That you'll be jumping up and down for joy before you as the people rejoice at the harvest as warrior rejoices when dividing the plunder. In other words, uh, you're going to be jumping up and down because now you've got spiritual strategy and now you've got the spiritual oomph. You've got the motivation. You've got the impetus. You've got the surge and you're not going to let up. Now you know the enemy's exposed and he's got to get off your finances. You're binding him up off of your finances and Binding them up off of your bank accounts and binding them up off of your business. Praise God. And you're and you're you're commanding the devil to move off of your turf and territory. And you've got that warrior anointing in you. You're zealous, you're fearless, you're bold, you're courageous. And you're moving forward with that exhilaration and that praise and worship, and it's all over but the shouting. I'm telling you right now, it's all over but the blessing. Tell you it's right there. Amen, brother. Thank you. Oh, hallelujah. Go on, amen. Um, I'm going to go ahead and I guess I'm going to close out. I, I've got a lot more. So, I mean, this could be part two going into. Uh, I have all the earmarks of, of praise. Praise and rejoicing, I connect it with what that means. What that means for you. What that means for us. Praise and rejoicing. It's not just verbiage coming out of a person's mouth. Praise and rejoicing connects with supernatural influx and influence from heaven. And I can go through and teach you those things, and I want to. I can't do it today, but possibly I'll bring it about if the Lord will let me, maybe tomorrow as, as a 
as as just a prelude into the second half of what this explosion is taking because we're get, we're bumping up right against August, and I believe August is going to be an exponential, unbelievable life change growth experience. I believe that. God is going to make himself available like never before in the area of our life and lifestyle and bring changes and, and set certain things in motion and turn some knobs and throw some switches in August. It's really going to be amazing. So I want to get this preparatory work in before the month of August hits. So, Father, in the name of Jesus right now, I just thank you, God, that you're going to move by your spirit, move by your word, move by your anointing, and, and convict people, uh, convince people in their own hearts that it, it is a personal walk with you. And they've got to work out their salvation with fear and trembling, and that they've got to walk in the spirit, not fulfill the flesh, and just uh, realize that spiritual, spiritual things are the lead out in our lives when we're born again. We're not... We can't walk in the carnal realm after what uh, after the sight of the eyes and, and what we know in the natural just because. But we've got to walk in the spirit. The kingdom of God is righteousness, joy, and peace in the Holy Ghost. Righteousness, joy, and peace in the Holy Ghost. So that's what we need to be right up to snuff with in Jesus name. God, I pray that you get us there, move us there, give us more ambition, give us more anointing, give us more animation, give us more of a mindset, help us to turn the corner, praise God, and hit God with everything we've got. Get all in and let's watch God move the mountains and move the enemy and move us into that place of breakthrough, bounty, booty, and blessing in the name of Jesus. And everybody said, amen. 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 God bless you, Pastor Steve Sterling. Talk to you later. Bye-bye for now.